What is up YouTube and welcome to another Narrative Crusades Index Card Review. Today we will be seeing just how far we can push a unit of Lich Guard. Can we get them to S tier? What combos are available to us? A quick shout out to our Patreons, old and new. Thank you very much for the influx of support. We're looking to give back as much as we can. We're going to see if we can give a second combat patrol away. Since a number of them are actually sympathy votes from our friends, you will never get such a high chance of winning your own combat patrol because a lot of our friends have said if they win, they don't want it. The Necron Index cards, they have been amazing. I really enjoyed the last few days pouring through these. The Index cards themselves, the units, seem to have some really nice combinations. They are really well written. There's so many different types of lists that can be written that are just going to be a lot of fun to play. I don't think it's ever been such a good time to be a Necron player. And they don't look overcooked. On to business. Lich Guard. Right. Solid stat line. Five inch movement. A little bit slow. Why is that? Well, 60 million years in stasis. You see if your joints are still working as well as before. Toughness 5 is great, 3-up save is good, 2 wounds is good. Leadership 7 is a bit of a surprise, especially since Lichguard are the elite and we used to be leadership 10. So we've got to be aware of those Battleshock tests. We will actually be failing some. All of this, 190 points for 10. The same as 10 intercessors. They seem a little bit cheap. I'm going to take it. Weapons. <clears throat> we have a Hyperphase Sword. 3 attacks. Weapon skill 3, that's good. Strength 6 is very good. That's quite a good anti-elite stat line. AP 2 pushes Terminators to their invulnerable save. Anything on a 3 is going to a 5. However, we could take a War Scythe. Only 2 attacks, not so good. Weapon skill 3, strength 8, very good. AP 3, very good. Flat 2 damage, much better. So they hit quite hard we've got to realise that ultimately their attacks are not high enough for us to be wiping units. So we're going to need some resilience. How resilient can we make them? So if we take our standard Lich Guard unit and we get hit by a bunch of heavy bolters, their strength five, they're going to be wounding us on fours. Let's say that six get through our arm onto our armour saves. We have a four up save, be it invulnerable or otherwise, that's three dead Lich Guard. So what happens if we add a noble to the unit. In this example, we'll use an Overlord. Well, that makes the unit minus one to wound. So now those heavy bolters are hitting on fives, sorry, wounding on fives, at plus one to hit for our army. We're not interested in that. We're interested in the robustness of the unit. So now we're gonna be taking substantially less damage. We can then activate the Overlord's ability and use the zero CP protocol of the Undying Legion. What that means is we reanimate D3 plus 1 wounds, not models, wounds. Realistically, that's going to be between one Lich Guard back and one and a bit. However, if we've managed to hide a reanimator within 12 inches because he no longer needs a line of sight, he's really good now as well, separate issue, we get an additional D3. We get that there and then. At the beginning of our command phase, we then get to do the same thing again. That is a lot of wounds back. It's effectively 4d3 plus 2 wounds back over a cycle. The orb of resurrection on the Overlord means we get to do it again in our opponent's command phase. That is a ludicrous amount of regeneration. But we can do even more because we can still add a crypt tech. In this case, let's add a Technomancer. That means that we've got a 5-up feel no pain. The crypt techs have all got different buffs, and I'll discuss those later. But in this instance here, with a 5-up feel no pain, the chances are we only lose maybe one Lich Guard, possibly two, and we're definitely going to get those back. But we can do even more, because what we can do is we can attach a unit of Thralls. If we attach a unit of Thralls, and we've got our Overlord, and we've got our Crypt Tech, then what we actually have here is it's a Noble unit with the Overlord, that's minus one to wound, giving us plus one to hit when we attack, which we don't care about right now. When we get attached, we use the tip, the Lich Guard's toughness, which is five. Once they've rolled to wound, we then apply that to the Thralls, who have a four up feel no pain. They get their armor as well, 
and then any wounds done, they get to use their four plus fear or no pain. And then we can go through the whole reanimation process. So we can use the thralls as basically a buffer before they even get to our lich guard. What that makes them is really inefficient to actually damage because we can elect between putting the damage on the thralls or the lich guard. So what nobles do we actually have? We have a number of nobles, and remember, we, we can only attach one noble with, with a notable little exception, which we'll discuss in a minute. First off, Anrakar the Traveller. Can't join. Doesn't like Lich Guard very much. Bit disappointing. I got that wrong on the last video. He makes some nice little buffs to Immortals, but he's no good to us. So who's first? Nemesaur Zendrek. I believe in the law. he's actually losing his marbles and going a little bit nuts. He gives us some random buffs. Now, we've got Sword and Board, and we've got War Scythe. Unfortunately for the War Scythe, we don't want these buffs. Sustained Hits is good, one and two. Three and four, Lethal Hits, Auto Wound. That means we don't get to try our Devastating Wounds. It's good, but it's a bit of a double-edged sword. Five and six, Devastating Wounds, we've already got that. So we're probably not going to want to put him on War Scythes. However, on Sword and Board, all of those results are great for us. He also has a nice little ability where he's increasing the CP of our opponent's stratagem. Very useful. He can actually be combined uniquely with this guy here. Now, we've got to note, he's not a noble. So he wouldn't give us our noble bonus. So he's only really going to be any good with the Nemesaur. I think he's some kind of Lich Guard role model. I think he's a big Lich Guard captain. He gives them fight first. That is particularly nasty in 10th, especially on sword and boards. Because if you're charging the sword and boards, you're going to struggle to shoot them. And now they're going to hit you first. He also gives a four plus feel no pain to characters, not to the units, just to characters. Particularly useful for Nemesaur Zendrek, just in case any precision comes through. So that is a particularly nasty combo. Who else is there? Well, there's Trays and the Infinite. Um, um, right. Well, let's hope he's got another book deal coming because he's got nothing else going for him right now. All of his abilities are next to useless for us, especially in a Lich Guard unit. So he's going to be collecting dust on the back of the shelf. Right, what about the Lord then? Well, he wants your unit to live forever. We previously mentioned our leadership is not great at seven. Well, if we actually fail a leadership test, then he can still use the stratagem, but he does cost CP. He has a res orb, so we're going to be doing lots and lots of reanimations. And he manages to clean out that dust from the rest of the unit, adding one to the move characteristics. So we're a whole one inch faster at six inches. Probably won't make a huge difference, but makes you feel better anyway. The big man, the overlord, probably one of the more stable picks. We get to use our stratagem for free of a resurrection. If we don't want to resurrect them, we can use the stratagem for something else. And he has the res orb, he has a tachyon arrow. He's not gonna be blowing up any titans like in Ruin and Rain. If you don't know what those books are, you should. They're brilliant, well worth a read. He's got some melee options. So all in all, very stable pick. Right, Cryptex, we're allowed one. Who have we got? Oricon the Diviner. Who needs shields? We were talking earlier, do we want shields or war scythes? Well, war scythes hit harder. If we put him in the unit, he gives them each a shield. So now we have a four plus invulnerable save for the unit. If we put a noble in there, it's minus one to wound. And they've got a four up invulnerable save. It's win, win, win. Worse than that, once again, he can go nuts and use his three attacks, become six attacks, go to strength 12, and he has five plus devastating wounds. That's really nasty. On top of the fact that obviously you've got the war sides going in there. This makes the unit hit like an absolute truck. Alternatively, we can use a Technomancer. Five plus feel no pain for the unit is not something to be shrugged at at all. Two wounds a model, five pluses are going to make some weapons really, really, really inefficient. In addition to that, he can actually buff any nearby connected units 
if you have them around. Again, not going to hurt. The Psychomancer has the potential to swing games for us. He's a little bit unreliable. He does need a line of sight, I'm assuming, to make people take this battle shot test. It's not clear, so jury's out a little bit. It does say select an enemy unit, but it is in the shooting phase. He also has a nice gun, flat three damage, AP three, strength six. Bit swingy, hitting on a four up, so not too happy about that. Probably something to do with the fact he hasn't got two legs to stabilize his staff. The Chronomancer, staple in ninth, looks good in tenth. Minus one to hit for the whole unit. Again, means we're getting damaged a lot less. Has a bonus of five movement after we shoot. But the Lich Guard haven't got guns, you say. Well, thankfully, another five inches. We can be quite slow, so that five inches can be clutch. However, we can't charge. So it might be that the Chronomancer finds a better place in somewhere else. And sadly, someone has stolen his amazing staff from Ninth. Now he's got this piddly little thing that's not really worth talking about. The Plasmancer, lovely little model, has a little bit of punch. Means that we can crit hit on fives. Uh, that doesn't do anything for us. None of our abilities are actually going to work off of that. So that's not so helpful to us. He can put out a couple of mortal wounds, but I think this lad's now going to find somewhere in our Necron Warrior units because they have lethal hits. Right, we've got Edward Pistol Hands here. He's my honourable mention. He cannot join the unit, right? He's a lone operative. He runs around on his own. So why have I mentioned him? I've mentioned him because our Lich Guard are pretty durable. If we stick old Edward Pistol Hands here nearby, he can overwatch. Not only can he overwatch, he can overwatch for free. Not only is he overwatching for free, he's hitting on twos. He's got six attacks, strength six, AP two. Not to be shrugged at. It gets worse. They're not going to really want to charge our Lich Guard. They're going to want to shoot them, to, to whittle them down as much as they can. To make us maybe try to waste some CP on reanimation if we haven't got the Overlord in there. Well, I've got bad news. If he's nearby and you shoot the Lich Guard, he shoots back every single time. That's going to rack up over a course of a game if you can make it work for you. This guy might activate 10 times in a game if you're lucky. They're going to stop shooting our Lich Guard, and now they don't want to charge our Lich Guard either. This is not a good position to be in. Finally, Charlie Sheen. I feel like Xeris is asking for a bit much this game. He's almost, if not slightly more points than a Land Raider. He is amazing. He is something that we're going to build our army around. He can't join the Lich Guard, but he does give them minus one on incoming attacks, basically making them Terminators. And he's got plus one AP on their attacks, making all of the weapons quite viable. He does have to be nearby. He is a tank. He is worth talking about. He is unfortunately very vulnerable. He does not have the lone operative keyword. So he's quite likely just to be whittled down at the very start of the game. Right, what's our summary then? Shields, no brainers. Nemesaur Zandrek with Vagaran Oberon is an incredibly powerful combo. It's going to go really well. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be an absolute nightmare to shift. If we're not going to use those two, then I think we put an Overlord in there, possibly with a Technomancer, possibly with a Chronomancer. If we decide we don't want to take the Overlord and we're going to take a Lord instead, maybe we're trying to skimp on some points or something, that's good fun as well. And if you decide that you don't want to do that and actually you'd rather have some friends because this is a pretty powerful combo, then instead we could look at Oricon the Diviner. Not really sure why I'd choose to do that one, to be honest. You could have the Psychomancer in there or you could have the Plasmancer in there. Right, what about Scythes? So for Scythes, we're taking Oricon the Diviner. Absolutely brilliant. Four up involved for the whole unit. We're going to whack an Overlord in there. Three strats, more, more reanimations. Absolutely golden. Or instead of Oricon the Diviner, if we want to be a bit nicer, we could perhaps consider taking a Technomancer. More likely to be the case if we've actually decided to take two units of Lich Guard with Scythes. Good fun is a Lord. 
Again, Oberon with a fight first, and again, the Chronomancer. And then if you're wanting to be keeping your friends or you're wanting to be running a bit of a fluff list, then Nemesaur Zandrak gets in there, the Psychomancer or the Plasmancer. So summary, what are our best choices? Oricon the Diviner and the Overlord, I think in the Scythes, Nemesaur Zandrek and Vagaran Oberon in the Sword and Board. Finally, for those who are new to the channel, our campaign ends this month. We've been really appreciating everyone who's got involved over the last few months. Once again, it is not too late to get involved with our free combat patrol this month as a giveaway. Thank you very much for the influx of support. Please do like, please do subscribe. Please do add a comment. We will reply to everything, ask questions, point out things that we've missed. We appreciate every way that you get involved. Thanks again.